orchestral music to the people at the price that the people could afford. Night after night, this packed audience listens to all schools of orchestral music. And I must say that it is the loveliest audience to make music to in the world. Sir Henry Wood speaking on the occasion of his Golden Jubilee as a conductor in 1938 and it would be very nice to think that if he were with us tonight he would think the same about the 1994 generation of promenaders. He does of course preside at all the proms as we're reminded uh, by the prominent displayed bust of him by Donald Gilbert. It's a bust which uh, survived the bombing of the Queen's Hall, which lives at the Royal Academy of Music and which comes here to the Royal Albert Hall for all the seasons of proms. And from its commanding position, just below the organ, Sir Henry's likeness looks out over the orchestra into the vast expanse of the hall, which is really packed tonight for what is, after all, a particularly special occasion in this special season of promenade concerts. This isn't only the hundredth season of the epoch-making musical enterprise set in motion by Henry Wood in 1895. Today is the exact 50th anniversary of his death on August the 19th, 1944. So there's a double reason to celebrate his achievements and to honour his memory tonight. We shall do so with the help of 16 leading solo singers and the BBC Symphony Orchestra, conducted by Andrew Davis, in a programme of music closely associated with Sir Henry Wood in one way or another. Music by Elgar and Vaughan Williams, by Schoenberg and by Beethoven. His Seventh Symphony will occupy the second half of the programme. This will, I think, be a rather moving occasion for many people particularly those like me, who remember Old Timber, as he was affectionately nicknamed from the old days. My father took me to my very first prom at the Queen's Hall in the mid-30s when I was still a schoolboy, and I must say I find it very extraordinary to be here tonight, considerably over half a century later. Well, now we start this evening on a memorial note with a noble funeral march written by Elgar. It was composed for a play based on Irish legend by George Moore and W.B. Yeats, a play whose title the composer anglicised to Gronia and Diomid. Elgar apparently thought that a new dead march was called for in the concert hall, and so he enlarged his theatre scoring and dedicated the full orchestra version to Sir Henry Wood. Henry Wood gave the first performance at a symphony concert at the Queen's Hall in 1902, and then, between 1907 and 1911, there were four performances of the march at Promenade Concerts, since which time it hasn't been given at the proms again. Until tonight, that is. Now, here's the leader of the BBC Symphony Orchestra, Michael Davis. The funeral march from Gronia and Diamid by Elgar is Sir Henry Wood's successor at many of the proms of the present day, the principal conductor of the BBC Symphony Orchestra, Andrew Davis.
funeral march from Gronia and Gianni, dedicated by Elgar to Sir Henry Wood, in whose memory it's just been played by the BBC Symphony Orchestra, conducted by Andrew Davis. One of those present at Sir Henry's own funeral in August 1944 was a lifelong friend, the ear, nose and throat surgeon, George Cathcart. He put up some money so that the young Henry Wood could accept Robert Newman's invitation to conduct promenade concerts at the new Queen's Hall. And he deserves to be remembered alongside and Newman. Well, that funeral march was played, for example, at the proms in the year 1909. And that was a desperately emotional year for Henry Wood. His beloved first wife, the Russian singer Olga Mikhailov, appeared at the last night of that season, but two months later, she died unexpectedly after an operation. Wood was devastated, but within two years, he'd married his secretary, Muriel Greatrex. That marriage broke up 24 years later, with much bitterness on both sides. And then Sir Henry met again a former pupil, Jesse Goldsack, who was to share the last years of his life under the name Lady Jesse Wood. At no point was Henry Wood prejudiced in favour of British music, but he made very sure that it got a fair hearing in his programmes. As early as 1906, he gave the first ever performance of the Norfolk Rhapsody No. 1 by a young man in his early 30s, Rafe Vaughan Williams. When the time came for Wood to celebrate his golden jubilee as a conductor, Vaughan Williams responded to his request for a new piece for the occasion by creating one of his most beautiful works, Serenade to Music, for 16 solo voices and orchestra. A few days after the Jubilee concert, in October 1938, Sir Henry Wood recorded the serenade with the same cast of singers, all of them leaders in their profession. The only surviving member of the 16 now, the baritone Roy Henderson, remembers the experience vividly, and Arthur Jacobs, author of the new authoritative biography of Sir Henry Wood, recalls the genesis of the work. He naturally thought it would be a good idea to have a work specially composed. And he wrote to Vaughan Williams, whose music he'd constantly cherished and who was a great admirer of his, and said, I'd like a work, but I don't want one, of course, that glorifies me. For one thing, it's got to be a work that can be performed on other occasions afterwards. And he said in his letter, I dare say some text springs to mind. And in fact, Vaughan Williams had a stroke of, I can only call it, a genius is in inspiration in taking lines from Shakespeare's The Merchant of Venice, really as a part of a dialogue between Lorenzo and Jessica, but he, he rearranged and interwove wove them and called it a serenade to music. It starts, how sweet the moonlight sleeps upon this bank. He wrote it for 16 named singers and put their initials on each of the 16 lines which they were to sing. <laughs> I remember singing the serenade very well. It was a wonderful time. He was so jolly and so happy at that time, around about 1938. And um, we had a lot of rehearsal. He took us to the um, Chilton Hotel for lunch, the whole 16 of us. And the conversation was so interesting, as far as he was concerned. Stephen, arrived back at the academy five minutes late for rehearsal, which has never been known before. Sir Henry Wood recording the serenade to music in 1938 at the Abbey Road Studios in London. The composer was in attendance, seated on the steps leading to the rostrum in case he was wanted. Well now the platform has been rearranged and we await the successors of those original soloists. Yvonne Kenny, Joan Rogers, Nancy Argenta and Heather Harper. The mezzo-sopranos, Catherine Wynne Rogers, Dean Rigby, Felicity Palmer and Yvonne Minton. 
The tenors, Kim Begley, Robert Teer, John Mitchinson, Anthony Ralph Johnson, and basses, Thomas Allen, Willard White, David Wilson Johnson, and John Tomlinson. Some of the most distinguished names in the world of singing today. All of them combining their services tonight in tribute to the legendary figure of Sir Henry Wood. And here comes Andrew Davis. We're all set now for tonight's performance of the Serenade to Music by Vaughan Williams, written to celebrate Sir Henry Wood's jubilee and given tonight in his memory. Lady Jessie Wood knew how Henry felt about this lovely work. That Vaughan Williams, he said, this is more than Vaughan Williams, darling. It's more than Vaughan Williams could ever do. It's something that has come from heaven.
beautiful tributes ever paid by one musician to another. The serenade to music by Vaughan Williams, written for Sir Henry Wood's Golden Jubilee in 1938. And now performed in tribute to Sir Henry at this 1994 prom on the 50th anniversary of his death. 16 famous solo singers of our own day. Originally the work was written particularly to accommodate the special qualities of the original team and perhaps we'll just quickly run through them. Eva Turner, Elsa Sadaby, Isabel Bailey, Styles Allen, Margaret Balfour, Astrid Desmond, Muriel Brunskill, Mary Jarrett, Frank Tiddleton, Perry Jones, Walter Widdop, Heddle Nash, Roy Henderson, Robert Easton, Harold Williams and Norman Allen. And it seems to me that the cast has been wonderfully well chosen this evening to echo, as it were, the qualities of those particular singers. All of them famous names in the world of opera and the concert hall. Small problem, how do you accommodate 16 solo singers along the front of the platform? We shall see in a moment when they make a return appearance. Here they come. John Tomlinson, David Wilson Johnson, Willard White, Thomas Allen, Yvonne Vinson, Felicity Palmer, Jean Rigby, Catherine Wynne Rogers, Yvonne Kenny, Joan Rogers, Nancy Argenta, Heather Harper, Kim Begley, Robert Tier, John Richardson, and Anthony Rolf Johnson. And a tremendous array of bouquets coming along. In the boxes tonight, I know that we have Roy Henderson, I'm glad to say, and Sidney Goosens is here, someone, of course, who played a good deal with Sir Henry Wood in the old days. The K is being passed along the line. And the long line it is. All of them, I'm sure, of identical size and impressiveness. Must have been quite a reunion for some of these singers in the dressing room backstage, I think. Not often that you see such a, a lustrous array of singing talent. Michael Davis, the leader, joins the applause. He had his solo moment, of course, in that work. It's a tremendous audience tonight. So many of them have been at the proms. It's difficult to distinguish one from another, really, but... There's certainly immense warmth and enthusiasm here this evening and not a vacant seat to be seen. And as the soloists leave the platform, possibly not for the last time, I don't know, that's all in the first half of this concert, dedicated to the memory of Sir Henry Wood in the course of this hundredth season of Prime. In the second half, we'll have a performance of the Seventh Symphony of Beethoven. Meanwhile, with the applause here still continuing, Radio 3 and BBC 2 go their separate ways. 